Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog, Discord server, maybe group, Facebook group, Twittering, Instagram. I, I, I barely use Instagram, but I'm, I'm there. And YouTube, where you get some additional content, live shows recorded, youtube.com backward slash Eric Tenkar. Remember, that's Eric with a K. So what am I going to talk about today? Well, you know, I was going to talk about something completely different. And uh, our new kitty, Sadie, just brought something to my attention. And I think it's very apropos, big word, I know, especially from New Yorker. But I, I, I think it is relevant when it comes to running games running your adventures, running things for your party, your 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 home group or any group that's going to be a repeat. When we brought Sadie in last week, she was a stray. Young, less than a year old, and uh, affectionate. She wanted attention, uh, acts like she knows people, so she might have been some, somebody's pet that escaped while they were very young. Uh, might have been a kitten that was a dump job, whatever. I don't know. But we took her in after we lost Ashley last week. And why is this coming up? Well, because with Sadie, we started her out in, I'm going to call it the yoga room, though it's really our sitting room now, because it has uh, these sliding doors that you could, you could close off. And we started her out here for the first... Two or three nights. Kept her out of the rest of the area. She'd, she'd escape into the kitchen, but we, you know, she was nervous, and then we kind of corralled her back into this room. And then I got a walk-through gate that we could put up in the hallway. So now I gave her access to the kitchen, gave her access to what is effectively now the yoga room, used to be the family room. It's like, still the family room. All right. But it's really, it it it's works so much better for Rachel's yoga. Um. And then, so now she had, she had that much access. I think I said this before, Rachel and I, we live in a two-family home. We live upstairs. My parents live downstairs. They have two cats and a bird. Uh, we have always had one cat and a dog. Our um, miniature dachshund, uh, Donka. So what am I getting at? Well, today, this evening, I'm coming back from upstairs, and who's waiting for me at the gate but our little feline daughter, right? And she's there, and she's meowing. And before, she'd kind of look at you as you came through the gate, and she'd step back, and then she wasn't stepping back. My parents are away. They're in the Poconos. Their two cats are away. Yeah, well, because they... uh, Toby who is uh, a Siberian. He's a big guy. Big and dog-like in his attitude. Very territorial. <laughs> would always have Ashley know that she wasn't supposed to go downstairs. And then the young girl, my parents have a kitten. She's about a year and a half now, I guess. Uh, she would kind of stalk Ashley. Not bad, but uh, infatuated with Ashley. So, yes. What happened? Hi, girl. Is Hi, Daddy Sadie. talking about you? Yes, Sadie. I don't know if you heard her come over the microphone, yeah. but that is Sadie. So, today she wanted to go downstairs. And she, I'm sure she knows the other cats have been gone for nearly a week. So, I opened the gate up for her. And I thought, hey, she's going to check out where our bedroom is, where the dog is. And, and no, she didn't. She Went down a few stairs at a time. She went down. And the first thing she did was go into my parents' living room where they have a bird. And my father prides himself on training cats not to attack the bird. The cockatiel, over 20 years old. Lucky. And uh, Lucky's in a cage. But my, my father has taught every cat that's been in this house to leave the bird alone. Now, this girl... 
Sadie was an outdoor cat. I'm sure she was a hunter. All right? I'm sure that she wasn't just eating food out of garbage bags and what we fed her. I'm sure she was uh, getting mice and getting the occasional bird, or at least trying to. Well, she's exploring the living room. I'm watching her, and she's going through the, the nooks and crannies. And then the bird sees her. And the bird, what do you think? Well, no, what you would think, a cat and a bird, who was going to intimidate who? No. Mm -hmm. Lucky turns himself upside down, spreads out his wings, and lets out the ship. And the cat went running out of the room like a cat out of hell. And then started exploring the rest. And I thought to myself, as all this was going on, I'm like, oh, my God. This is actually almost like a dungeon environment or almost like an adventuring environment. Like you start your you start your area off small, right? You start your players in a walled garden or a larger, uh, a small sandbox or just a small town, small dungeon, right? Because you don't want to overwhelm your players. And then maybe you, you start opening up the uh, hex crawl, the sandbox, right? And now you've give them two adventures they can check out and maybe get involved in some low level city adventure and, and they tell you kind of what interests them and it's like Sadie checking out the kitchen, going in the window, uh, finding a space in the family room, a little corner where our girl Ashley used to hide. She's found that as her, her little hiding spot too. And then at some point, your players, your adventuring group, right, gets to the point where it's like, hey, we want to explore further along, which she did. And maybe they're going to come across stuff that's going to be too powerful for them. Or they're going to think it's too powerful for them. And the smart players, the smart characters, right, what do they do when there's something that they go into the big, larger world and it is unknown and it's a threat? Well, if they're smart, they run away. Right? That's what this girl did. But then she explored a bit more. But what did she do after she explored it all? She came back up here to the room where she started. Okay? She came back to home base and came to me and looked at me because this is home base. Like if you if you plan your campaign outright, your players should always have that connection to home base, to that starting point of the campaign. And you should you should have reasons to bring them back. In the case of Sadie, it's where her pan is, it's where her little cat bed is, it's where her food and water is, right? But for your players, that might be where their mentors are, all right? And maybe that's where the mentors can feed them further information to get them really involved in some faraway land. But you got to come back then with what you find because your mentor needs it for whatever to save the world. It's interesting, though, that you have to expand slowly. If, you, if I gave Sadie the access to a two-family home all in one day, and by the way, she had access to downstairs, but not to the basement. But if I gave her access to everything, it would have overwhelmed this cat. She would have gone into a panic. You can overwhelm your players by giving them too much at the start of the campaign. I was guilty of it. Okay, When I came back to DMing after more than 10 years away from it, ran my first game using, God, uh, a predecessor to Roll20. I screwed up because I gave them a blank palette and said, hey, we're going to run this to the hex roll and have at it. And they couldn't focus because they didn't have a place to focus at. Okay? You have to gradually bring stuff out. It's like boiling that frog, right? You put a frog in... You never heard that story, Frank? Right? No, sir. Okay, so you take a frog. You put a frog in a pot of room temperature water and you turn the heat up low. Uh, the saying is, 
I have no idea if it's true or not. I've never boiled a frog. Might have hunted them as a kid up in the Poconos with a BB gun. But my BB gun wasn't lethal. It would just leave them a BB wart under their skin as they hopped off. Um, but the, but the, what the saying is that if you slowly bring that water to a boil, slowly, the frog will not know, will not notice the change in temperature until they're dead. Really? Yes. Now, I'm not saying that you want to kill off your, your the PCs in your campaign. But you don't want to throw them into boiling water. Can you run a campaign like that? Uh, was it Tower of the Black Pearl? Uh, Harley Stroh? One of the earlier DCC adventures, not DCC RPG. I think you can get it in the Adventure Begins uh, collection. Had an adventure where basically you are throwing a player into that because their actions... Uh, will basically kill off, I think, all NPCs over six levels. So your your players are suddenly pretty powerful individuals in the world. And I can work with certain groups. I can work in certain settings. But in general, you want your players, especially if you're dealing with a, with a new group of players. It's one thing, all right, you've been playing with the same group for the last, I don't know, four or five years, kicking off a new campaign. You know how they work. You know how they think. But if you have a new group of players, right? If you're if you're it's a new group, you need to gradually learn about each other. And you shouldn't have to learn all about the world as you're learning about each other. In this case, too, with Sadie, she knew us from the outside, but she hadn't been with us 24-7. I mean, those first couple of days, I slept out here in uh, in, in in the yoga room in my recliner. I slept out here because she needed um, company. And even when we gave, gave her more range, I slept then on the futon in the family room. And she wasn't. She would stay in her home base, but then she would cry because she was afraid. Again, you have to give your group, your players, time to adjust to the new world that you were offering them. Don't overwhelm them. Feed things out slowly, and then before you know it, they'll be they'll be running full speed, and then maybe even faster than you can catch up to them to explore what you're offering. But just don't shock the system right out of the gate. So that's what a cat has taught me over the last week. Figure that shit out. You're so smart. I don't know. I am. Oh, right, thank you, Rach. Yes, I am so smart. Thank you. <laughs> uh, folks, we are in the world of the pandemic. So please, take common sense precautions. If you need guidance beyond that, seek professional help from the medical profession. Get their advice. Don't get it from TV. I don't care if they claim to be medical professionals. If they were, they wouldn't be on TV. Uh, be safe, be well, God bless for all those dice, and I will talk with you all tomorrow, God willing. Later, folks. Mm -hmm.